Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Caleb McGillivary, who is also known as Kai, the hatchet-wielding hitchhiker? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll look at the background, the timeline of various incidents that are relevant to this case, and offer my analysis. Getting started with his background, I'm going to refer to Caleb McGillivary as Kai, as this is the name he apparently prefers. Kai is from Alberta, Canada. His father and mother divorced when he was four years old. He has a history of mental health difficulties and was hospitalized several times in relation to that. He also spent quite a bit of time in treatment homes. He graduated from high school and took some college classes. At some point when he was in Canada, he was convicted of felonies and misdemeanors, but I couldn't find the information about what those charges were. There were both positive and negative descriptions of Kai reported by people who knew him. On the positive side, he was described as creative, intelligent, outgoing, generous, extremely kind, and full of energy and fire. On the negative side, he was described as unruly, unpredictable, someone who could turn suddenly dark, crude, and profane. He had a history of drifting across Canada and the United States trying to find his own way in the world. One time when he was hiking across British Columbia, he was sexually assaulted. The perpetrator was arrested and charged, but never convicted. Kai would later claim that he also experienced similar events at other times. He would occasionally return to his family, work, and school at various times, but he wasn't happy with the routine and would go back to drifting. In February 2013, when Kai was 24 years old, he was once again drifting. He did not refer to himself as homeless, rather he said he was home free. His lifestyle involved surfing, attending parties, and hanging out with various groups of people he met on his journey. He would sleep wherever he could, in motor vehicles, under bridges, on boats. He was sleeping near Route 99 in California when a motorist named Jet Simmons McBride, who was driving a black Oldsmobile, pulled up next to him and signaled for Kai to enter his vehicle. They would start making their way to Fresno. 54-year-old McBride was 6 feet tall and 290 pounds. He was a conspiracy theorist who believed that a terrorist attack was going to occur at the Super Bowl. McBride had only recently come to the conclusion that he was Jesus Christ. I guess that was a big day for him, a day that somebody would mark on their calendar. Perhaps if somebody was looking at his calendar, like looking over his shoulder and saw that mark on that day, signifying the day he believed he became Jesus Christ, they might ask him, hey, what happened on that day? And he would say, I'm glad you ask. Do I have a story for you? McBride destroyed his phone so evildoers could not track him, and he thought the Illuminati was chasing him. When they arrived in Fresno, McBride gave Kai $40 to buy marijuana. Not surprisingly, things only went downhill from there. Evidently, McBride rammed his car into a group of utility workers. One was pinned between McBride's car and the utility truck. McBride exited the vehicle and started screaming, I am Jesus Christ, and racial slurs. He then bear-hugged a bystander and was kissing her when Kai approached McBride from behind and repeatedly struck him with a hatchet. His hatchet-assisted intervention apparently brought an end to the attack. Just after the incident, a reporter named Reisbeck intercepted Kai, the hatchet-wielding hitchhiker, and recorded the now-famous interview. After Kai gave an announcement directly to the camera about how everyone is lovable, he told Reisbeck his account about how he tried to protect the woman being attacked by McBride. He demonstrated how he struck McBride with the hatchet using the words, smash, 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 a terrifying phrase that brought joy to millions. Kai would not tell Reisbeck his real name. Jet Simmons, McBride, and the worker he attacked would survive. McBride would later be sentenced to nine years in a mental health institution. Many people were interested in Kai the Hitchhiker, his story about this terrible event seemed to convey an authenticity as well as a sadness. Reisbeck recorded Kai's email address and contacted Kai about all the numerous offers that were coming in. People wanted him to appear on television shows, 
There was talk of a reality TV show. He initially turned down all the offers, but eventually he did make an appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live. As Kai enjoyed his new celebrity status, his behavior was impulsive and reckless. He urinated in a variety of public places, was disrespectful to women, would use expletives in front of children, and was generally getting into trouble. Reisbeck started to have serious concerns about Kai's mental health, wondering when a person who appeared to be uninhibited was actually unbalanced. Kai had a massive tattoo put on the right side of his face and neck, which in addition to his other behavior, turned many people against him. He was accused of being mentally ill, unintelligent, intoxicated, and attention-seeking. Over the next few months, Kai was having difficulty garnering the same amount of attention, although it did not appear to be due to a lack of effort. He continued to make controversial social media posts, like one in which he stated he wanted to be in an adult film and have the profits go to a group that gives shotguns to single mothers in poverty-stricken areas. I guess so they could blast their way out of poverty. I'm not really sure what he was thinking there. Kai had made his way across the United States, and ended up in Times Square, where he would meet a 73-year-old lawyer named Joseph Galfi on May 11, 2013. The pair climbed into Galfi's vehicle, and they drove to Galfi's home in Clark, New Jersey. They spent two nights in the home. The authorities would later say that an arrangement of a sexual nature was involved, although Kai vigorously denied that. Galfi's paralegal noticed that he didn't show up for work on Monday, May 13. Kai made a social media post the same day, suggesting he woke up in a stranger's house after being drugged and assaulted. Galfi was found dead in his home. He was not wearing many clothes and had been severely beaten. He had fractures in his neck, ribs, and face. One of his ears was almost completely torn off. The police suspected Kai because of text messages on the victim's phone. Three days later, Kai was recognized in a coffee shop in Philadelphia because of that famous video and his tattoo. The police were called. They arrested him at a nearby bus station. To explain what happened to Galfi, Kai told the authorities he blacked out and would wake up in the morning to find Galfi assaulting him. He claims that he fought only enough to escape and didn't know that Galfi had died. Kai would be tried for murder about six years later, in 2019. At the trial, it was revealed that Kai had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder. The bipolar disorder was not used as part of his defense, but the PTSD was. Kai was found competent to stand trial, even though serious mental health concerns were noted. He was denied a request to fire his lawyer and represent himself. The police had made a number of mistakes during the investigation. Kai's attorney was highlighting them with some degree of success. The difficulty was Kai's behavior. He would interrupt his own attorney and become so disruptive that the judge almost kicked him out of the courtroom. Kai kept accusing the attorneys, the judge, and the police of being in a conspiracy. Kai the hitchhiker would be convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to 57 years in prison. The judge referred to him as a powder keg of explosive rage, I guess as opposed to a powder keg of peace, love, and joy. Kai will be eligible for parole in 2061. Now moving to my analysis. Kai's mental health history is not perfectly clear. I mentioned before he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and PTSD. There is also a report indicating he displayed what was referred to as serious antisocial behavior from the time he was a toddler. He reportedly admitted to killing hamsters and trying to set the family home on fire when he was a child. Also, as I mentioned before, he had been institutionalized several times when he was young. Looking at video that's available of Kai, like the famous video where he described his hatchet attack and when he was featured on Jimmy Kimmel Live, there are a few things that come to mind. He appeared to be carefree, spontaneous, and talked in a way that seemed like a stream of consciousness, like he wasn't holding back. He was saying whatever came to mind, there was no filter. Many found him to be humorous, but he actually appeared to have a poorly developed sense of humor. He wasn't good at reading social cues. I don't think he really understood what was funny and what was not. Even though he was quite endearing to many, he was actually socially awkward. It's almost like he was trying to read other people's expressions, but could not quite figure them out. So perhaps a lack of empathy. 
His potential personality profile would be high in openness to experience. He was certainly adventurous, non-traditional, and creative. It's debatable whether he was actually intellectually curious, though. He was low in conscientiousness. He was impulsive and reckless. Caution doesn't seem to be something that was too important to him. We see high extroversion. He was outgoing, seemingly friendly, assertive, and sensation-seeking. His level of agreeableness is not clear. I'm going to guess it's on the low side, though, because he committed murder. And as far as neuroticism, we see a high level, although he was not fearful. So he appeared to be angry and had difficulty resisting temptation, but he didn't really seem to be afraid of too much. I find it interesting that many people were initially attracted to Kai and wanted to help him. They wanted him to spend nights in their home. They were eager to meet him. They wanted to discuss business proposals. But once potential symptoms of mental illness became more apparent, like impulsivity, reckless behavior, a disregard for societal norms, and profanity, nobody was really interested in associating with him, or certainly the number of people interested dropped dramatically. It was like his novelty wore off. People just grew tired of him. They thought they were seeing somebody original, creative, some wandering good Samaritan who was living life on his own terms. But in reality, they were looking at somebody who was struggling with serious mental health issues and who needed treatment and compassion. It would appear that Kai's behavior in relation to the McBride attack was justified, like he really was protecting that woman from McBride. However, I'm surprised at how many people embraced the idea of a seemingly unstable hitchhiker who carried a hatchet. Like, that's what we need more of in society to keep people safe. Do sentences including the words unstable, hatchet-wielding hitchhiker usually communicate a story that ends well? I think the story of Kai the Hitchhiker, Caleb McGilvery, shows how people can become enamored with sudden celebrity based on initial impressions, but then find that disillusionment is not far behind. Perhaps communities should reconsider the homeless hitchhiker hatchet initiative and stick with more traditional means of staying safe. Those are my thoughts on Caleb McGilvery, Kai the Hitchhiker. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. I hope that you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.